Hey guys, Dan the RBRT guy back with you again. Hey, thanks for coming back to the channel and checking out the new video. So guys, this week I want to talk to you about broken bolt extractors, easy outs if you will. I know a lot of you guys have two, three, and even four different sets depending on the situation you find yourself in. I want to show you how RBRT broken bolt extractors can fit the bill and take care of business with just about any job you come across. I've got some cool demos set up at the bench vise. Let's get started. Okay guys, over here at the bench vise, here's what we've got. I've got a cap screw that I've drilled out to where it's 100% round, as you can see on the inside of that. And what I'd like you to do is imagine that we've snapped the head off a bolt and we've drilled a hole. That's what this represents. So we're gonna go ahead and drop the screw into the vise and snug it down real good. Now there's a few things you gotta know about extractors. Number one, when you're talking tapered extractor, a spiral or a four-sided fluted like this one, the drawbacks from these extractors is that when you drill a hole and you bang this guy in, you're only getting bite at the top leading edge. Everything from the, that part of the cone down is not making contact with the cavity. So it has a very small bite print. Typically what happens is as you apply torque on these, they just tend to chew the top of the cavity apart because they don't have a real good bite. With the RBRT extractor, it's a straight cut. So that when you drill a hole and you bang this guy in, it's 100% engagement all the way down and all the way around. It's got a very, very significant bite print. So we're gonna go ahead and take our extractor and pound it in. All right, now when you put torque on one of these tapered extractors, it really does fight against its own design to try to dig in. And because that bite print is so shallow, it typically just chews up the hole. They don't bite real good. Sometimes you can get them to bite, but typically not so great. With the RBRT extractor, because of that straight cut, when you pound him in, it's engaged, you know it's locked in tight. Now, another cool feature about our extractor is that, as you can see with this guy, it's a square head, so you have very limited capability of driving it. You've got to use an open-ended wrench or a, uh, maybe a 12-point if you can get one to fit right and kind of tap it on, a crescent wrench, something like that. We use a regular six-point head, so any socket, any wrench can drive ours. I really like that. I think that's a kind of a leg up on the, on the design. Now, when this thing's locked in, it's just locked in tight, okay? Now, the one that I'm showing you today in this demo is called our FOR extractor or our extractor with foreign object removal, okay? What that FOR is is this threaded sleeve that we've designed. And that threaded sleeve has a couple of different features, a couple functions to the design. First one is when you drill the hole and you can bang it in and if the situation allows, you can take that and spin it down to the mating surface as long as you haven't broken the stud off under flush. You can butt it up to what you're trying to take out and just give it a little snug, just like that, just a little turn, and it locks it into place and it reinforces and strengthens the extractor. All right, that's really great feature if you have the ability to use it. It doesn't have to be done for it to get that great bite, but it just gives you a little bit of extra lock tight and a little bit of stability, really nice. So at this point, whatever it is that you're trying to take out, obviously had a problem coming out or you wouldn't have snapped the head off. This thing's locked in tight, but a lot of times, especially up north in the rust belt, if you're doing your dance and it's not working out for you, the next thing you want to do is try to heat that bolt. Well, you don't want to heat it up with the, with the tool in there because if you get the flame on the tool, you'll soften it, it'll burn it. So another feature of that sleeve is if you continue to spin on it, it'll pop it right up out of the, out of the cavity and it doesn't damage it. You don't have to hit it back and forth and try to waller it around and get it to work. Now, because of that significant bite on the head, I can go back in, pound that back down, spin that sleeve down, give it a little snug, and it really did lock in just as tight the second time as it did the first time. I can't think of an extractor that I've ever used or 
you know, sold as a Mac man that was able to do that. And it bit down just as well, really significant. Now guys, it really is all about the bite, right? It's, that's the only job an extractor has is to grip. The better the grip, the better your chances of getting it out. Doesn't mean you're gonna get it out, but it gives you the best fighting chance to get it out. And just to show you how significant this grip is, I'm gonna continue to go ahead and just snap the head right off of that bolt. You know, the whole point of that exercise is that if I can put enough pressure to break that bolt, if it was, would be able to be removed through the unthreading method, I'd have got it out. Now, you know, certainly any tech that's, you know, seasoned like my ears will tell you the more extractions you do, the better you're going to get at it. It really is quite an art form to be really good at this. But, you know, the RBRT extractors, they really do give even a younger tech a good fighting chance at getting it out without too much, you know, fumbling around and trying to get it to bite and going through all the rigmarole it takes to take out a broken bolt. Now the last part of the function of that sleeve is really cool. The FOR, the foreign object part, you just grab the bolster there with a pair of pliers and that sleeve will just walk whatever it is right off the tip. Boom, just like that, just pushes it off. And because it pushes it off nice and clean and straight, there is no damage to the extractor whatsoever. You know, a lot of times the damage to an extractor happens when you're trying to actually separate what it is you were getting out. So that foreign object removal sleeve just really does add a whole new dimension to, you know, just the versatility of what these things can do. Absolutely the best extractor on the planet, both in versatility and function and in bite and grip. Now, keep in mind guys, you know, extraction choice is important when you're trying to figure out which one to use. The smaller ones, they don't accept a lot of torque and the bite's so significant that you will break them before they slip. Keep that in mind, right? It's S2 hardened steel and it's the tiny ones, number one, number two, and number three. You know, if you try to use them on a bolt that's just too big, you're gonna have trouble. You don't wanna break that extractor off in what you're trying to get out, obviously. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up the bench vise for the next demonstration. I got another cool one hanging there. I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm all set up for my next demonstration. And like I said at the beginning of the video, you guys likely have a few different types of extractors. And I just wanna show you that the RBRT extractor, because of that straight cut design and the significant bite, is good for all manner of extractions. Now you just saw me snap the head off of a grade eight hardened hex bolt. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this self-tapping Phillips head screw and I'm gonna drive it into this piece of wood. Now I looked around and this is the hardest piece of wood I can find hanging around my shop. And we're gonna drive that in really good and tight. That self-tapper part of the bottom of it ought to give it some really good bite. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take my drill. Now, I was at a show, a customer show, a couple of weeks ago, and a customer came up to ask me while I was doing my demos, hey, are these any good for anything else other than broken bolts? And you know, I said Phillips head screws are one of the hardest you know, to extract because they're never really tight. They just get cammed out and snotted up real good. So the smaller ones, I'm going to use a number one, in this case, a non FOR, which is a, our extractor without the, the sleeve, without the collar. And I'm just going to go ahead and drill into this bad boy. So let's do that. All right, you know, when it comes to Phillips head screws, X marks the spot. Just drill straight into the center of it. Grab your extractor. Drill your hole. Pound it in there real good. Once again, six point, regular six, side, six point socket. And look at that. You know, they're never really tight. And I'll tell you what, this piece of wood's hard. It's like a mahogany type wood. So it was down in there pretty tight. And I didn't even get that 
drilled in there straight as you can see by the way it's wobbling around. But, you know, I got it. And out she comes. Boom, just like that. You know, the smaller ones are fantastic for Phillips head screws. Just once again, be careful of this choice of the size. If it's too small of a screw and you try to drill into it, you'll just end up popping the head off. And then maybe if you can get a good bite down into the hole, you could still get it out. But, you know, common sense is always key to the game, right? So when it comes down to extractors, the RBRT lineup is great for just about anything you can think of. It really is. If you can drill a hole and pound our extractor in, if it can be removed through the unthreading method, likely we're going to get it out. We truly are your best fighting chance. So that's the demonstrations for today. I'm going to come back over here. I want to talk to you about one more thing, about another set that you haven't seen. Hang with me. I'll be right back. Okay, guys. So the last thing I want to talk to you about is our extra large, long, four set piece of extractors. Now you don't get the one, two, or three. This one starts at number four and goes up to number seven. I'm going to shoot some pictures up on the screen to show you this. Have a look at these. Now these are pictures that customers have sent in to me over the months that we've been, you know, doing RBRT. And these things are excellent for taking out broken spark plug heads out of cylinder heads. Okay. So the the nasty Ford, a couple of these are Chevys where they've snapped the head of these spark plugs off and they've used the smaller extractors, the FOR and the non-FOR. I always come back and I submit to the guys, you know, if you'd have used the longer ones, you'd have had a lot easier time because obviously they're longer, they've got a little bit more girth to them and you can get down into that cylinder head without trying to fumble around with a much smaller one and maybe hitting your fingers. So keep that in mind. Guys, the part numbers on these are this. On the four piece set, it's SXLE4 RBRT. Once again, great for bench work where space is not an issue. Excellent for spark plug, broken spark plug removal. The seven piece non-FOR set is SXE7 RBRT. And then of course that wonderful FOR sleeve is SXE7 RBRT FOR. They are from sizes one to number seven. We put the drill bit size on the index there on the foam so it takes the guesswork out of what drill bit to use. Just use that drill bit with that size extractor. You can't go wrong. Truly, when it comes down to extractors, the RBRT line of extractors, whether FOR, non-FOR, or extra long, are your best fighting chance at drilling a hole, pounding them in and getting it out. So guys, do me a favor, hop on the Mack truck, have a look at these things. You'll notice right off the bat how different this design is and how effective it is when you use it. Do me a favor, give the video a like, subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell, leave me a comment in the comment section, sure like to hear from you. I'm Dan the RBRT guy, we'll see you next time. Thanks very much.